Welcome, investigator. Evil is on the rise. Crime is escalating. Our mission is to eliminate the crime by exposing evil, examine why it manifests, and highlight the brave souls that confront it every day. Join us as we work together to bring justice to every victim. Welcome to All Things Crime. Here's your host, Jared Bradley. Uh, no, um, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we've uh, we've had this uh, happen quite often out here in California in the Los Angeles uh, area, more so in L.A. County than Ventura County. L.A. County has that person, Gascon. He's the uh, district attorney. He's very soft on crime. Hmm. And so it's just they, they if they do catch, most of the time they don't bother to even stop them. But if they do stop them, they're just processed, left, you know, turn free, turn, you know, they're let free, and then they come back again to another store. Kind of that flash mob that yeah. uh, turns up. And we've had, we've had one or two cases out here in Ventura County, and these people are from Los Angeles. You know, they, they say, hey, you know, Thousand Oaks, they got a nice mall. Let, let's hit it. So, but our, um, you know, our sheriff's office is, you know, pretty, pretty wise to all this now. They're ready. They have ways of, they have their sources as well, kind of infiltrating these, these mobs. And so uh, when that does happen, they're, they're pretty quick to respond. Yeah. Well, this kind of activity is just going to keep getting worse and worse until they, they actually start cracking down on it because, you know, you, whatever you incentivize, you're going to get more of. And if you're incentivizing, and it's incentivizing may may not be the right word, but what Gascon is doing out there is basically by especially by announcing it. And you know, I think they have the same type of problem and the same type of DA in Chicago and Philadelphia. Yes, and this kind right. of stuff is happening everywhere. And it's like, look, yes. you can't let a gang, and especially when you announce it, that's that's the thing that just drives me crazy. I'm like, right, right. you know, these these guys come out and they get into office and they're like, you know what, we we are no longer going to prosecute anybody that that breaks into a car, you know, breaking and entering or even grand theft auto. So, gee, what a surprise that all of a sudden these guys are starting to see more carjackings, carjackings, <laughs> like, stolen cars, carjackings. You know, it's interesting, Jared, you know, I even have heard that some of these gang members that come out here to rob, you know, the flash mobs, some of them are carrying a mace just in case any of the store employees try to stop them. They can take the mace and, you know, mace them. And, uh, you know, that's the end of the store employee. You know, they, they stop them in their tracks. And that is so sad to, to hear that. It's dangerous. It's just, it's, it's, it's terrible. Well, and it, it- a lot of these stores also are complicit in it because their corporations are basically saying they, they tell the employees don't do anything. You right. know, don't even try to stop them. And even a That's security right. guard, it's like, why, why do you have a security guard who's just standing there watching these guys run out? It, right. If the security right. guard can't do anything, then number yeah. one, why are you paying the guy? Yeah. Number two, what, that just makes zero sense to me. It's like, I, you're, you're basically just, submitting to the mob it's like I, I what i don't know to me it's just pure cowardice it's like look yeah. somebody has to stand up to these people and, and and the bottom line is if you expand this out if you if you actually think about this on the track of where does this end ultimately and society just can't survive this if we if we can't yeah. figure out um how to stop enough and it's masked as a petty crime because each individual has less than a thousand dollars supposedly. Right. right. But as a whole, it's a criminal enterprise and, yeah. and it, it is run by there's somebody behind all that. Oh yeah. And yeah, there's, you know, society just can't survive it. And that's why so many businesses are moving out of San Francisco and, and yes. LA I've got a friend that, that runs like a, a small business in the San Diego area, okay. but fortunately he doesn't have a storefront. And, but if he did, I bet he would be packing up his stuff and moving somewhere else. And I, I just don't know how anybody Absolutely. can survive being, being a small business down there. It's just, what, what's, what's the point? I mean, if you get robbed more than a couple of times, then y your margin for the year is gone. Uh, so you're, you have no profitability. 
Right. And it's, contrary it's to what customers, right? I mean, Jared, you scared all the customers away. They're not going to want to shop. They don't know when these mobs are going to come in. You're absolutely right with the it's a kind of a decline of society. You know, I, I thought that this we were founded on Judeo Christian values, thou shalt not uh, steal being one of the commandments, and yet these people, who cares? You know, I've been I've been repressed or I've been wronged or, you know, I have a right to, to, to this uh, stuff. Well, that's not the way it works. I mean, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be like that. And then other people say, well, that's just the way it is. You know, uh, nothing we can do about it. We just have to live with it. And, and I, I see that as, as, as a problem as well. Yeah. Apathy and, and Apathy. Right. just being unwilling to step up and, and actually do and stand for what's right. Right. Yeah, like you said, our, our society is based on, there's a certain moral standard that has to exist in order for our, you know, the United States to actually exist. And right. as, as that deteriorates, it, it, it can't survive. And I agree, you know, with you. The, these things, it's interesting with what I do with MVAC systems, we, we are starting to sell a lot of, well, it, it's not starting, but it's increasing. It's and it's the counties and towns around the big cities that that it's happening. You know where we're putting most of our systems, and and it's because the the big cities. It's interesting. I've been told by by multiple like CSI types. You know if they belong to NYPD or or other even LA LA County, they're so busy that. They really don't have time to put in a, a really good investigation, but the counties outside, they do, and they have the resources for it. And most importantly, as more and more of the crime, like you said, the gangs from LA that hit the Ventura malls, Ventura is not going to stand for that. And so they said, you know what, we're going to catch these guys and we're going to put them in jail. That's and then they will know that. If you're going to do this kind of stuff, don't come to Ventura County. Exactly. That's and exactly. yeah, I mean, Polk County in Florida, I think I'd love that guy, that <laughs> sheriff down there. I love it. I've watched videos of him. I, it's, I can't think of a better sheriff because I, and there's other sheriffs obviously in Texas and Arizona and places like that, that are kind of the same way, but they're like, look, if you break into somebody's house in this County, you're going to get shot. Yes, and I yes. I recommend my every citizen have weapons in their home and know how to use them and be trained in them and be safe with them. I agree. But you need to be able to defend yourself. And I think imagine. more and more citizens in the U.S. I mean, there's a reason that that, that gun sales go up every time a, a, a liberal administration comes in. It's because they know they're going to start restricting law enforcement and they're going to start being more and more lax on criminals. And, and so you got to protect yourself and that's just, it's a sad reality, but Absolutely. that's where we are, I guess. No, that's, that's where we are. Yeah. That's what it said. And you know, my dad, my dad was a, and, and he's mentioned in my book, he was with NYPD for almost 40 years and he passed away in 2020 during COVID at the age of 90. But, you know, in a way I was happy to see him go because what was happening uh, with the uh, police forces and the, you know, defund the cops and all, all of those things uh, would, have, would have broken his heart, uh, really, uh, to see that. Because he was all about service to the community and uh, good cops and, you know, just, j just a shame what has happened since. Yeah, it's really sad. I, I've interviewed a number of NYPD guys and, you know, a lot of them, they, they love New York. They born and raised there, but they just can't stay. And especially yeah. once they, once yeah. they retire, they're just like, I, I have to get out of here. Sure. And just because they're just sitting there watching their, their beautiful city and their beloved city just deteriorate and, and fall into chaos. And it, it just, they just can't handle it anymore. And it, exactly. it's really sad. You know, I, like I said, being a military guy, I oh, see yeah. some of the things that's happening in the military where, you know, they're more concerned about pronouns than they are actual training and readiness. And, you know, it's just a matter of time before we have to send these guys off to war again. Sure. And I'm sorry, but the, the enemy's not going to care what your pronoun is. 
I don't think so. I don't think so. No, I think so. I can flat guarantee it, Ken. <laughs> oh, no, no, for sure. I, I'm just, I'm stupefied every time I see, you know, this thing with the military and the, the sole emphasis is on pronouns and, you know, this inordinate thing about diversity, you know, mil- the military is the military, you know, they don't care what color or creed or religion, whatever, you know, but all of a sudden, and there's this big emphasis on that. And I, I think you're wasting your time. And I think the enemy is laughing at us. Go ahead and study more diversity, take more diversity courses, work on those pronouns and we'll work on our systems, our weapon systems. It's ludicrous. Yeah. It's oh, it's ridiculous. Up. But, you know, I think the gangs are laughing at us too, because sure. this politically correct stuff is is happening at pretty much every level. You know, it can go all the way down to diversity hires in police agencies. And, you know, frankly, I, I think in addition to having strong moral compass, you know, for our society to survive, it also has to be based on a meritocracy. And Yes. You know, I don't care yeah. what you look at or look like. I don't care who, you know, what, what, yeah. if you're male or female, I don't, you know, none of that matters to me. Right. If you're flying my plane, you know, I travel a lot. And right. if you're the captain and you have those four bars on your shoulders, I don't give a crap who you are or what you look like. I want to know that you can fly this plane and that you're effective at it because, Amen. yes. <laughs> You know, yeah. if you're a, if you're a hire that only is yeah. only there because of what you look like or who you are, or what your pronouns are, then you're putting everybody at risk. And, yes. and eventually yes. that is the, yeah. the, the mentality that we're going through right now is eventually going to catch up to us. And sadly, a lot of people are going to get hurt because of it. And I, I just, it's sad to me because I, I just yes. look at it and I'm like, you know what? You put people in positions because they are the best. Right. And, that's that's what it should be. Uh, you know, again, I, I'll refer back to my days in in uh, at the 101st Airborne. Okay. We had a battalion commander that, so I I was attached to the the field artillery battalions there at the 101st, and right. there's three battalions there. Okay. And I mean, my battalion commander was a great guy, but the one that was over two battalions, he I think he was the third battalion commander. Well. Yeah, he was a black guy, and I'll tell you what, he was a stud. Everybody wanted to be in his battalion. Nice. And, the, nice. you know, you saw the entire performance of the battalion rise, and this nice. guy was, he just rocked. And nice. everybody respected him, and he, but he was, he was courteous. He was, he was easy to approach. And I, I don't, I don't know if he realized how much respect. The rest of the the brigade really gave him, but this guy was just amazing. And that's, that's you know, and this is back in the nineties. And you know, I I, I don't think there was a I, I don't know back then. I I didn't care, and I don't think most people did. You know what what color somebody was or anything like that. But anyway, that's that's kind of a a side note. But um, Jared, you, you put it best. You said meritocracy. I I totally agree with you. Hey, by the way, 101, the, the 101 Airborne, are they based out of Fort Bragg? No, that's the 82nd Airborne. 82nd, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, my... Yeah. Oh, that's just, relative, Ken, that's relative. unforgivable, man. I can't even, can't even believe you did that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm no, sorry. No, Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Fort uh, Campbell, Just above, okay, just above that's Nashville. Right. That's right. That's right. Okay. I'm, I'm with you now. I'm with you. <laughs> I've been to Bragg several times as a kid. I had, my uncle was... Uh, with with the eighty uh, second and and his son ended up with the eighty second. Yeah. No, I was always envious of the eighty second because they got to jump out of airplanes. But you know, I had my my nine jumps, but that was it. And okay. Yeah. No, we we were air assault. That's what the hundred first is now, and so okay. we got to repel out of the helicopters, and you know, right. I, I was good friends with a lot of helicopter pilots because I was the movement officer for my battalion. So. Oh. I, I was always finding some excuse to go down to the aviation group and, and get a ride down there. <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So, and Thank you for your service. Oh, I appreciate it. Well, thank you for yours. And, you know, Ken, let's, um, let's wrap this up. I appreciate you, uh, you coming. But again, 
The name of the book, ladies and gentlemen, is A Cop's Son, One G-Man's Fight Against Jihad, Global Fraud, and the Cartels. And it's available on Amazon and everywhere else. And Ken, I, I, I haven't had a chance because we've just barely met, but I haven't had a chance to read your book yet. But I, I have ordered it. And oh, it's, well, um, thank you. It's, thank you. It's on my list. I've, I've got a couple of books that I'm reading right now. And hope you enjoy it. I have another book that I'm halfway through. Uh, it's called Land of Sand, and it's about my uh, coming of age in the Middle East in South York. Interesting. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you could write several books on on that. It's you know just even even trying to explain to the average layman uh, you know the difference between Sunni and Shia. I'm sure you could spend a lot of time on that. So I could. I could. For yeah. Sure. All right, Ken. Well, hey, thanks again for coming on and and sharing a little bit of your story. And I hope everybody enjoys it. But definitely go out there and get that book. And But yeah, like I said, it's the day before Thanksgiving as we're uh, sitting here right now. And so happy Thanksgiving. And I hope everybody out there has a safe one. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. My pleasure. We'll talk later. Thanks for joining us. Your attention today brings us one step closer to exposing and eliminating the evil that brings crime to our communities. Hit subscribe and share this episode. Together, we will bring justice to every victim.